Hello everyone and welcome to the most prestigious event of the year or uh, better yet of every other year as it's um, an event that takes place every other year. Then we have the candidate tournament and then we have the next year the World Chess Championship. It is Yanni Pomnishi uh, versus Ding Liren and uh, this year it's uh, a little bit different because we don't have uh, the actual world champion defending his title. Uh, that would be Magnus Carlsen. Magnus uh, Carlsen decided not to play the World Chess Championship event. He's uh, either skipping this cycle or uh, has given up on it altogether. Uh, we still don't know, but that's um, a topic for, for a different time. Here we are focusing on this uh, first game of the World Chess Championship match, uh, Nepo versus Ding. Now, as this is the first game, I'm going to give you some of the information regarding this um, uh, event, and uh, I think that, uh, that that's going to be enough. But if you have any questions, uh, regarding the players themselves, the format, the World Chess Championship, uh, pretty much anything, uh, do do put uh, some questions in the comment section below, and I will answer it at the beginning of the uh, of the second video. So the tournament is being held, uh, or rather, the match is being held uh, in Kazakhstan in Astana. This is the venue. It's the Saint Regis Hotel, a very nice place, as you can see. And uh, it will take place over the course uh, of uh, 21 days, uh, from 9th of April to 30th of April, which is kind of different because, um, uh, well, before you had two rest, uh, two rest days, uh, sorry, uh, two two days playing, and uh, no, three days playing, and then a rest day, then three days playing, and then a rest day. Now we have two days of play, then a rest day, two days of play, then a rest day, and it takes um, a bit longer. And another thing that's very important is that we will not be having 12 classical games. Instead, we will have 14 classical games. Uh, which makes it all the more interesting and uh, there's a higher probability that we will get um, uh, the World Chess Championship decided in classical time format uh, not, uh, unlike you know the, the previous uh, ones where pretty much every uh, all of them uh, were decided in, in rapid time format the last one decided in classical time format was when Magnus defeated Vishwanathan Anand in, uh, in 2013 and also okay in the rematch in 2014 uh, but ever since um, uh, that uh, we only had uh, we had decisive games like in the Carlsen Karyakin match uh, but uh, not really uh, anything decided in the classical time format. So that's uh, that's different. So um, I, I'm uh, very much looking forward to that. I think Magnus was looking uh, to uh, make it shorter than that. He wanted to include the lower time formats if uh, he was to, to defend his World Chess Championship title. But this is what they're going for uh, for now. So uh, like I said, uh, it's not a World Champion versus Challenger, but in fact, the winner of the candidates tournament, Jan Nepomnesi, who absolutely demolished the competition in the previous candidates tournament, uh, versus Ding Liren, uh, who placed second uh, in the candidates tournament. I I believe he was uh, behind the Nepo by a point and a half, which is huge. Uh, but okay, it did, it did get him a seat at the World Chess Championship match. And if you uh, haven't seen uh, their game uh, at the the uh, FIDE candidate tournament, do check it out. Uh, will be uh, first link in the description below. They played two games, of course. One was the the first game of the candidate tournament where Nepo absolutely crushed Ding Liren in a uh, in a in a true uh, brilliance. It was a miniature. I'm sure you guys have seen it. In case you haven't, maybe it would be a nice preparation in uh, you know be, before you check out the, this game. And their head head to head score uh, it's fairly close. Uh, uh, I believe Jan won three games. Uh, Ding won two. Games games and eight games were drawn so basically that one brilliancy was uh, uh, the the tiebreaker in in Jan's favor but now of course 14 more games of classical chess before we uh, decide on what to do next uh, in order to win the match of course you need seven and a half points as 14 games will be played uh, and uh, as it says on the official uh, page of the World Chess Championship match if no uh, winner is decided then we go into playoff the prize fund is 2 million euros uh, split 60 to 40 percent unless we go into tie breaks then it's 55 to 45 uh, percent no draw offers are, are allowed uh, until after move 40 uh, and each players has each player has 120 minutes for the first 40 moves then 60 minutes for the next 20 moves and then 15 minutes uh, to the end of the game with a 30 second increment starting only for move 61 so this is very important and i really love this um, uh, thing about the world Chess championship match so you don't have increment all the time you only get it uh, only if you reach move 60 uh, once you hit that move 61 that's the first time you get increment because uh, players would pretty much draw every game uh 100 100% if, if it was the other way around. This way, it is possible for you to go into time trouble. And if it's a crazy position, you will have two to three options maybe to choose from. 
you will you or rather your chances of blundering do increase uh, so so I, I think this would will make it a more action-packed world chess championship match uh, but you know uh, it still uh, re remains to be seen and a playoff will consist of four 25 minute games with a 10 second increment starting from move one if still tied up uh, to uh, up to two pairs of five plus three games will be played if tied again single three plus two games are uh, being played with colors reversed each game until one players uh, player wins so uh, the world championship match will most certainly not be decided by an Armageddon game so uh, that being said uh, let's check it out uh, and if you guys are interested okay here's a, a nice photo of the uh, of the venue here is uh, the the first move being made uh, by uh, I don't know who the gentleman is if you guys know do share uh, in the comment section below and here is a sort of a wider angle uh, just so you can enjoy the venue uh, before we check out the actual game so that's it let's check it out uh, it's Nepo uh, he, who has the first move and he opens the game with pawn to e4 there were a lot of uh, different uh, speculation on uh, whether Nepo would, would, would go d4 c4 maybe he would go for the reti uh, or, or something else but uh, e4 it is for the first game and this thing is mostly an e4 e5 player uh, I'm sure he doesn't mind this and that he's very well prepared for it so he goes pawn to e5 knight to f3 knight to c6 and bishop to b5 the Rui Lopez is on the board we have a6 Morphe's defense and the bishop to a4 we have knight to f6 castles and bishop to e7 and here you might think okay it's not a very exciting um uh you know a choice of opening for for a first game of the world chess championship match but already here on the next move uh we don't have rookie one which is the top move in the position nor do we have d3 which is the second top move in the position actually we, ha we have a very very uh, uh cool move order bishop captures on c6 we have d captures the reason why b captures on c6 isn't played is is why b captures on c6 isn't played in pretty much uh, any of the, of the line point is that now uh, after knight captures and knight captures let's say rook to e1 you go back knight to f6 and now uh, d4 and now let's say you castle uh c4 can be played and now uh, you will always have problems here you cannot play d6 or d5 because that pawn on c6 will be hanging so this pawn here uh, uh, it's just weird and if you play c5 you allow d5 so white will always get a little bit of something there so that's why after bishop captures on c6 you don't even though it's a general principle to capture towards the center you capture away from the center in this particular instance and now just rook to e1 uh, of course uh, just uh, nicely continuing here knight captures on e5 would be would be a suboptimal move because here after knight captures rook to e1 there's always the annoying queen to d4 move which forces you to make silly moves like knight to d3 to defend and so on bishop f5 and already uh, black is uh, enjoying this game very much so instead after d captures on c6 we have rook to e1 just nicely continuing the game and now we have knight to d7 it's a sort of a, a berlin type question how do you defend the e5 pawn whether you go queen to d6 or you play bishop to d6 or you play knight to d7 or you pin the knight with bishop to g4 here we have knight to d7 and it took ding some 10 minutes uh, to um, make this move basically was the first uh, think of the position up until this point they just uh, made moves and here nepo strikes with d4 it's a move that uh, statistically brings white the uh, the biggest chance of of actually uh, gaining something more than a draw e captures we have queen captures nicely centralizing going after the g7 pawn and here ding castles we have bishop to f4 uh, which will always put that nasty pressure on that uh, c pawn which is doubled uh, and now knight to c5 offering a queen trade and while you can definitely trade queens here we have queen back to e3 and already you can feel that nepo is starting to create something here the black queen is still on d8 if if uh, if Nepo can get knight to c3 and rook 8 to d1 in could be very very unpleasant if the knight moves maybe the queen comes to g3 you can have a lot of pressure against that black king and uh ding definitely did start to burn time because Nepo was still at like an hour and 57 minutes on the clock and ding was already uh, to an hour and 37 minutes on the clock so down 20 20 minutes which could be very re relevant uh, later on and um uh it's uh, uh basically the, the the first real improvement this was also played in the Bondarevsky versus Smyslov game from 1946 and uh, 
uh, uh, Queen to e3 is, is the improvement uh, over that game. So, uh, of course, uh, Nepo uh, prepared very well. And here we have Bishop to g4. Now, the real question is, do you go f6 to, to, to counter the, the knight here and to prevent e5? Do you go Bishop to g4 or Knight to e6? And I will quickly show you Knight to e6 as this is a World Chess Championship game. So I will show a line or two uh, extra uh, than I would in, in a regular video. Uh, the point is that uh, let's say bishop to g3 and now you continue with b5 c5 and so on let's say white continues knight b to d2 pawn to c5 rook a to d1 very standard stuff and now uh, black will have to move the queen at some point knight to h4 you want to grab that f5 square bishop to g5 you can attack the white queen let's say queen e2 and now bishop to b7 so it's a position that would probably arise uh, maybe through this move order maybe through a different move order white will gain the access to the f5 square and the ding will uh, after some calculation uh, probably play g6 and now the point is uh, there's this very nasty knight to f3 move and now absolutely everything gets traded off and it's a force to draw for example g captures an f5 e captures an f5 now attacks the knight also puts pressure on the bishop here knight to f4 you can trade queens rook captures rook queen captures rook captures knight captures on g5 let's say knight captures on g2 rook captures on e8 rook captures and now let's say f3 threatening to pick up the knight but just h6 and now after king captures on g2 h captures on g5 you will pick up that c7 pawn and now uh, g4 uh, uh preparing to, to win back material here let's say rook to d8 uh offering a rook trade uh and now you can play g captures and f3 check king somewhere wherever rook captures bishop captures and everything gets traded down into a completely drawn end game uh with uh, bishops of uh, opposite color so knight to e6 uh, would uh yield something like that so ding instead uh plays bishop to g4 and it is only now as of move 11 that we have a completely new game so not knight to e6 has been attempted here bishop to g4 uh wasn't and now uh nepo plays knight to d4 and it's a very very tricky move now uh he he's saying that he doesn't want to give ding the option of trading bishop for knight also he wants to be able to bring the queen to g3 also f3 might be an idea in some lines because you don't want that bishop guarding d1 you want to develop the knight and play rook 8 to d1 to attack the black queen so those are some of the ideas behind the moving so, sorry uh, behind moving the knight and also if the bishop ever goes let's say to h5 you will gain access to the f5 square uh, and here we have queen to d7 by Nepo. And this is a very, very important decision uh, because there are a couple of other good options. Bishop to, sorry, bishop to f6, one of them, knight to e6, the other, and queen to d7, seemingly the third one. Uh, I'm just going to show you why uh, they're interesting. So if you go knight to e6, okay, let's say we just trade, knight captures, the bishop goes back, knight to c3. Now rook a to d1 is coming, and uh, you can play something like, let's say, bishop d6, but after rook a to d1, black has a very easy choice here, and that is bishop captures on f4. You just offer a queen trade, of course, white does not want to trade queens, and then you play queen to e7, which is perfectly fine for black. Now you don't have to play queen to e8, you, you've uh, connected your rooks, your queen is on a very natural square, and the game just nicely continues. So knight to e6 is definitely a viable move. Uh, the other one being bishop to f6 kind of uh, asks for e5. And if e5, then bishop back to e7. And h3, now trying to win that f5 square for your knight, uh, you can play this in between knight to e6. And knight to um, going after the d4 knight. And now after knight captures an e6, you're just going to win back the uh, the, the uh, piece with the bishop knight to c3, now preparing rook a to d1. And here you will have to play queen to e8. But then later on, you can play some like b c6 c5 maybe even queen to c6 connect your rooks and uh, get your pieces into the game so those are all very very playable options dink however plays queen to d7 and it's a very very different uh, uh move order than what we've discussed because now uh do you have time for knight to c3 and rook a to d1 so it's a very very uh, a, a very interesting uh, topic uh, because it, it is of course um, uh, possible and if it is possible you should definitely go for that and Nepo calculates that it is possible he plays knight to c3 and now comes rook a to d8 and the question is how do you continue here uh, uh, what move is is there to, of course, you, you have to defend somehow against the uh, queen captures knight. Uh, but there are many moves to try here. You can bring the knight back to f3. You can bring the knight to b3. You can bring the knight to f5. 
you can play so many uh, interesting moves and there's one that uh, I don't know if uh, Nepo considered or maybe even had prepared uh, but there was the very very tricky pawn to h3 move the reason why probably it wasn't played uh, because after queen captures on d4 you don't touch the bishop you actually play knight to d5 that's the that's the tricky part now threatening knight captures bishop with check and now after bishop captures um, and now after moving the bishop uh, with bishop to f6 you will play knight captures on f6 and now after g captures on f6 queen captures on d4 after rook captures you are going to play h captures on g4 and now you get this position where okay it's a bit of a, tr a tricky pawn structure for both white and black but let's say after rook captures on e4 rook captures knight captures bishop captures on c7 you get this position where it's um, uh, equal material black has a double f pawn white has a double g pawn but it is a bishop against a knight and with play on both sides of the board uh, uh nepo's bishop would be uh, much much stronger so the point is that after h3 you can't really play queen captures on d4 and the main move to consider here is rook f to e8 now the difference is knight to d5 will not be a threat as the the bishop is defended and now after queen to g3 going after the c7 pawn now you play queen captures on d4 bishop captures on c7 and now rook to c8 chases away the bishop bishop back to e5 now attacks the queen and queen to b4 but now the problem is there's really not all that much to do here you can play a3 and if queen captures on b2 which of course uh, you will play now you go under the mask of the bishop knight to d5 and now queen captures on c2 queen captures on g4 threatening checkmate here and now knight to e6 defending knight captures on e7 will win the bishop rook captures and now rook a to d1 and uh you sort of win the win the d file for for yourself uh it's a very tricky line okay you're down a pawn but you do have immense pressure on uh, on black's king and uh you know it's uh it's something definitely worth considering uh if you are uh, looking for uh for advantage but uh it wasn't played in the game knight to f5 was played just getting the knight out of harm's way and also asking are you maybe interested in capturing on f5 and um it looks like uh, it is possible but the problem is after bishop captures and e captures you don't really uh, have this because the bishop here would be, be hanging so rook f to e8 and now the idea probably what everyone thought was pawn to f6 and it would be a beautiful pawn sacrifice uh, because you can't really take it uh, g captures is just weird because it opens up the the black king for free the bishop cannot capture because of queen captures knight the knight would hang so you'd have to play <laughs> bishop to f8 and here there is a spectacular line featuring a queen sacrifice f captures on g7 rook captures on e3 uh, g captures on f8 with check promoting to a queen rook captures and now rook captures on uh, e3 and you would have um, a very very interesting game because of the the dark square bishop and the rook uh, uh, you know uh, being joined in such harmony the problem is after rook to e8 there's really no good way to make this work for example rook to g3 checking to h8 and now bishop to h6 so looks wonderful but rook just comes back to g8 and you don't really have all that much if rook d1 of course you want to get the other rook into the game as well queen e7 now trading doesn't really do anything for you you will not be having rook to d8 you can play rook to f3 and okay the the tension uh remains uh it's it's a very tricky uh, position where uh, a queen has been traded for for a rook and bishop uh and uh, you probably don't have enough compensation but you know it, it's a, it, it's very interesting you have to check what happens so okay after this uh, knight to f5 move of course bishop captures was not played instead we have knight to e6 uh, uh of course the knight was coming here all along it was ma merely a matter of time attacking the bishop on f4 and now comes knight captures on e7 again uh, there was this uh pawn to h3 move that is uh very interesting but again look at this bishop to c5 attacks the white queen and after queen to g3 bishop captures on f5 and now a nice in between move rook a to d1 but again you allow black to give up the queen queen captures on d1 rook captures and now rook captures with check knight captures and now bishop captures on e4 and again okay white is up a queen but the bishop pair here is is incredible the rook if it's uh, able to come into the game it's gonna be it's not going to be easy defending this uh luckily you have bishop captures on c7 and you prevent rook to d8 so that uh, is going uh, you know uh, white's way but still the bishop pair is just uh, spectacular here so uh, even though you could win the black queen you don't really you don't really want to play this uh, i don't know uh, at least Jan didn't so here instead knight captures on e7 
queen captures and now bishop back to g3 to get rid of this tension knight captures on f4 will no longer be an option and now bishop to h5 now ding has to decide how to how to do this does he want to play f6 does he want to does he want to strike with f5 maybe for example captures captures also a possibility but this makes uh, uh things a bit too interesting uh, maybe in black's favor opening up the f file so uh objectively white should always be better but uh, maybe it's giving black a bit too much so instead bishop h5 ding now wants to play f6 and put a bishop back on f7 and now pawn to f3 we have pawn to f6 and uh nepo says all right you're not really doing all that much i'm gonna uh, make my position even more safe i'm gonna play h3 and king to h2 and ding says i'm gonna do exactly that and then ding plays h6 we have king to h2 uh, and now bishop back to f7 uh, the problem is uh, you could continue uh, with something like queen to b4. But like we said, it's uh, capturing on b2 is never really a good idea for black. If you play queen captures on b2, uh, there's uh, even the, <laughs> the the huge threat. Do, do you even see the huge threat here? That's um, uh, the, the great question. Why is this a bad move? Feel free to pause the video and try to figure out this hypothetical position while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, finding this uh, beautiful queen trap. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is bishop captures on c7. So congratulations to everyone who found that. The uh, The way to find this is that, okay, of course, you're going to ask yourselves, uh, what do we play uh, if uh, the, the rook just attacks the queen? Well, uh, the, the c2 pawn will, will hang. But what if we play bishop captures on c7? Then the problem is, uh, after knight captures on c7, you have this beautiful rook to a2 move, which uh, if, if you just played uh, before playing bishop captures on c7, the queen could go back and the pawn would be protecting the queen. That's why you give up a piece in order to uh, make the b6 square unusable for the black queen. And here you would just uh, win the black queen and the game. So that's the problem. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, 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 a very nice idea. You might think, okay, I, I, you know, I fixed everything in the center. I have no uh, weaknesses on the king side i'm just gonna play queen before and win a pawn uh you know uh, it, like that ever worked out for anyone but okay bishop back to f7 and now we have uh, a very nice idea and that is uh, rook to d1 uh so instead of bishop to f7 okay ding could have uh, uh, maybe decided to double rooks on the d file but you know of course that uh, you're not going to be owning the d file or anything because white will just play rook a to d1 and nipple will be able to trade rooks uh, whenever he wants so here b6 and now pawn to a3 uh, another move to consider is f4 because you of course want to play this uh, at some point but this bishop to h3 now just looks very odd you, you force uh, the rook to move you can either capture and then all of a sudden the d file might become the ding file as um, uh, you, you're gonna lose control over it so instead just pawn to a3 we have pawn to a5 by ding probably with the idea that um the pawn on a6 does not become a target. For example, if uh, if a nice rook to d3 lift is being played, if rook captures, queen captures, then the a6 pawn might become a target in some lines. So that's why a pawn to a5. And now we have knight to e2. And here there's actually another beautiful line uh, that uh, we have to explore because uh, a lot of people actually thought it was possible that it uh, uh, shows up on the board, and that is knight to d5. Now the problem is you have to capture. Uh, there is really no, no good square for the queen here so let's say c captures pawn captures now you can't move the knight because the queen would hang but there's queen to c5 luckily the only good move for black and now d captures on e6 queen captures on e3 rook captures on d8 there's always um, a time to, to capture on f7 so you don't have to rush queen is still being attacked so queen to g5 and now e captures on f7 with check king captures on f7 and now rook to d7 check king to g6 if you go king to g8 then there's also the the rook e4 could be very nasty so king to g6 uh, but now rook e to e7 you go after the g7 pawn and after rook to g8 rook captures on c7 and you really don't hope uh, uh, to achieve anything here with uh, with black i mean you, you have a queen uh, but your rook is stuck for the rest of the game guarding g7 so it doesn't look like something you uh, you can win the engine says it's perfectly fine i uh, might even favor the position a little bit for black probably because the black queen can gobble up maybe some pawns here on the queen side and then create some some pressure but it really doesn't look like something that you would willingly play like imagine if imagine if you play rook to f7 and then the bishop ends up on okay on f8 not really uh, i mean it's still possible you, you can always get like two rooks versus a queen uh so you know 
uh, not something to look forward to. Uh, but okay, uh, it was uh, it, it definitely was possible. But okay, knight to e2 is what Nepo decided to go for, and uh, yeah, okay, also f4, uh, pretty much the, the same idea here. If you if you capture rook captures on d1, uh, then uh, rook captures on d1, and bishop to h5, uh, again asks uh, pretty much the same question. Okay, you can play rook to d3, but then knight to c5 all of a sudden, and that rook uh, isn't really uh, having the, the the time of his life. You know, it's a really really weird position. Even ideas like maybe rook to d4 knight go no knight going back to d6 can be played here so you, ha you have to be careful you know in order you know you're looking for advantage but you might uh, draw the game uh, by four so here instead knight to e2 was played and now we have rook captures on d1 rook captures and rook to d8 offering a rook trade and you, you know that the rooks will get traded off at some point but it you know it's now it's a matter of who can last longer we have pawn to c5 and now ding is trying to cover all of his weaknesses by playing these pawn moves even though here you are kind of giving uh, Nepo maybe free squares for his knight, uh, so also very tricky stuff. Uh, queen to d2, doubling up here. Now you can't really move the knight or the queen from the defense of the rook here, and he's basically asking for Ding to capture on d3. Uh, the situation on the clock is 50 minutes for Nepo and 30 minutes for Ding, and here we have pawn to c6. Uh, just, uh, you know, uh, uh, grabbing more squares here. Uh, Ding is now down to 18 minutes after playing this move. So he spent quite a lot of time uh, calculating this. And Nepo decides to go for Rook capture on d8. There's also another uh, fun uh, move to consider here. Uh, and that is Bishop to d6. Which really looks like a move that Nepo would play. Uh, now, uh, but, but it's very hard to calculate. And Ding is already uh, very low on time. So you don't want to allow him more time. But let's say uh, Queen moves somewhere. You can now play F for and if c4, which is basically black's only move, rook to g3, and the, the uh, character of the game changes completely, like uh, maybe f5 is coming, then you're going to have problems on the king's side, uh, but also if knight to c7, just e5 can be played, and now if captures, captures, again, you have problems on the king's side, so a very, very uh, rich position, but Nepo goes uh, for uh, after c6 for rook captures on d8, uh, it is in fact the strongest move recommended by the engine, so Nepo not going for any of uh, the uh, usual nipple moves uh, and now knight captures on d8 this is much better than queen captures the problem is after queen captures and knight captures there's always this bishop to c7 move uh, yes by playing c6 uh, ding removed this uh, pawn from being a target but uh, once the bishop lands on c7 all of the pawns now become target so that's the problem uh, with ding's queen side and it's something that he's going to have to figure out how to t uh, handle we have knight captures on d8 and now a quick queen f4 now with ideas of queen to uh, c7 also queen to b8 in some lines also just queen to b8 uh, or c7 followed by bishop to d6 in some lines and uh, a lot of stuff for ding to, to handle and he plays bishop and uh, he plays pawn to b5 which is kind of your only move and the problem is uh once he played it he had 13 minutes um, uh, on the clock and he needs to make 13 more moves to reach time control so basically he's left with uh like a minute for a move uh, until the uh, first time control is reached. You, you, the problem is if you play something like bishop to c4, which can be played. Let's say knight to c3, and now you try knight to e6, attacking the queen. There's queen to b8 with check, and once the king moves, there's b3. You challenge the bishop, and now what uh, What can the bishop do? There really aren't all that many squares. Even if you play king f1, uh, bishop f1, king can attack it with the g1. So you have to go somewhere like bishop b5, but now knight captures, c captures, and queen captures on b6. You win a pawn, and these pawns are now incredibly weak week you will win them all probably and then win the game easily so that's why b5 had to be played and now we have queen to b8 now putting pressure on the knight so uh, the king is still on g8 if bishop to c7 lands uh, it's game over so ding has to play king to h7 and now comes bishop to d6 and here nepo spent quite a lot of time calculating this uh, position because uh, it's probably the move that will decide the outcome of the game uh, do you want to play bishop to c7 to put pressure on the knight and win the a5 pawn do you want to play queen to c7 trade queens and then win the a5 pawn uh, or do you want to play bishop to d6 now the uh okay the uh, bishop to c7 idea is uh, is a nice one. Uh, so after knight to e6, the point is after bishop captures on e5, there's always this nasty knight to d4 move, which attacks the knight and the pawn here. So you have to trade knight capture c captures, and after, let's say, bishop b6, attacking the d4 pawn here, you will play c5. Looks a little bit odd, but... Um... 
uh, you know, it should hold. Whether or not Nepo will be able to, to um, uh, exploit these weak pawns is uh, definitely a question. But at some point, if you are able to play something like C4, D3 could be good. All, all in all, objectively, this is better for white. Whether it's better or much better, that really depends on, on how, how good you are. Uh, but one thing, uh, you've eliminated the A pawn, which means at some point, B3 and A4 will create a pass pawn for white. And uh, uh, you know, long term, that will be that will be uh, definitely an asset. Uh, okay, another thing: instead of the immediate bishop c7, you could play queen to c7, trade queens, and now let's say queen captures bishop, captures, attacks the knight and the a5 pawn. The knight moves, you will play bishop, captures on a5, and now again knight to d4. The same idea: the knight and the pawn are attacked, captures, captures, bishop to b6, attacks the pawn, and now you don't have c5 because. Uh, the queen obviously is not supporting it. Um, uh, so let's say king to g6. You will play bishop captures on d4. And now you're going to be up a pawn. And pretty much all of these lines where you capture a5, you will be up a pawn. But the problem is, let's say bishop a2. King g3, bishop b1, attacks the pawn, c3, and now bishop c2. Uh, it's uh, uh, Here you're even up two pawns, not one pawn, but it's bishops of opposite color, and uh, it, you know chances are, are aren't very high that you will have winning winning chances. Uh, yeah, weird, weird thing to say, but uh, you, you know what I mean. So those uh, are Nepo's options uh, regarding queen to c7 and bishop to c7. However, Nepo decides against it. He plays bishop to d6. He figures this will give him the most winning chances, but the problem is Ding pretty much automatically played queen to d7. And now there's a problem. If you play bishop captures on c5, which was sort of Nepo's plan, there's queen to d2, attacks the knight. And now after the knight moves, you have knight to e6, uh, remove the defender of the c2 pawn and let's say you play knight captures bishop captures you have this weird position where okay uh, white is now up, uh, up a pawn but black queen is so active we're going to be able to pressure all of these queen side pawns and imagine this pawn this bishop coming to c4 and f1 pressuring the g2 pawn the white queen will have to go back all the way to g3 and it's going to be, I mean, okay, you will you imagine you, you put a queen on g3, you put the bishop on, uh, on f8, you can also put some pressure on the black king, uh, but it's not maybe a game you want to play, uh, giving Ding so much activity. So instead, Nepo played knight to g3, we have knight to e6 by Ding, now the c5 pawn is defended, and now pawn to f4 by Nepo. Uh, and this is not an easy move to make, this is a move that Nepo made um, probably due to Ding being so low on time, uh, Ding was uh, below 10 minutes on the clock here, Nepo had some 20 minutes on the clock and you could play c3 here you could play c4 here c4 is also a very nice move because of course uh, b captures on c4 will never happen ding will never triple his pawns uh so c4 is an option uh, obviously a4 is an option you could also try to try to get uh, two pairs of doubled pawns here which would be you know positionally bad for black but nepo played f4 and now f5 uh, becomes a possibility amongst other things so how can ding play this he plays pawn to h5 he wants to kick away the knight with pawn to h4 uh, and here uh okay instead of this uh, there was also the possibility of knight to d4 that we should discuss the point pawn is attacked and after c3 knight to b3 to keep defending the pawn and now let's say uh, queen to f8 to put pressure on the c5 pawn now you can even play queen to e8 and now again you will win the pawn here for example queen captures bishop captures knight to d2 will now attack the pawn uh, and also come to c4 to put pressure on the b2 pawn so it doesn't matter black will be down upon in all, pretty much all of these lines uh, but black will be uh, able to hold this mo most certainly so okay ding decided to go for h5 instead and now we have pawn to c3 uh, now uh, rushing with f5 isn't really all that impressive because you have h4 that's the problem and that of course d knew when he played h5 and now if f captures on e6 you have captures with check and if bishop captures now you will play queen captures on e6 and now okay e5 can be played but now let's say c4 you never want to trade here and then after e captures g captures to, to, to keep uh, an eye on the e5 square and the game continues but bishops are of opposite color uh not uh, not much to be uh lo looking forward to here so that's uh, one of the one of the options so instead c3 was played uh just a nice slow move uh, uh the, protecting the d4 square from the black knight and now we have uh pawn to, uh, pawn to c4 and here the situation on the clock is 16 minutes for nepo and only six minutes for uh for ding we have pawn to h4 and now queen to d8 uh, sorry queen to d8 finally offering a queen trade 
uh, and uh, Nepo has to make a very, very difficult choice. If he trades queens, let's say captures, captures, and goes pawn to f5. Yes, he uh, has a very nice position, but knight to b7, let's say attacks the bishop, bishop e7 and a4, and it's not uh, not easy to play this. Uh, okay, the, the knight will definitely have some squares. You can play knight e2, knight to f4. You will have access to e6, to g6. Uh, the, the h5 form could be uh, very weak, but uh, uh, the black knight will also have uh, those things. Imagine the knight coming to... to at, uh, d3 then how do you defend b2 there's really no way then a3 falls then c3 falls so if you try too much you also give black too much so instead queen to b7 was played now comes um uh, bishop to e8 as the bishop here was attacked you could also trade let's say queen captures bishop captures uh, but I mean again you're giving white uh, way too much here the knight uh, has easy way of coming into the game the, the black king is very vulnerable the h5 pawn is hanging so not something you want to do so ding defends the bishop bishop to e8 and only now knight to f5 so here instead of just uh, going straight for the end game and uh, picking up that a5 pawn like we've discussed nepo has created some sort of a some sort of a madness here on the board that Dink has to solve. Uh, he has five more moves to play until reaching time control. And he plays queen to d7. He offers a queen trade, queen back to b8. And of course, he repeats queen to d8. He says, if you want to push, you push, but I'm repeating moves. And it's... Uh, Eight minutes for for Jan and three point fourteen minutes for uh, three minutes and fourteen seconds for Ding, which uh, Anish Giri said that it's a uh, a pie amount of time. I thought that was very very, very nicely said. Uh, but okay, uh, Nepo wants to continue the game and he has to trade Queen captures on d8. We have Knight captures on d8 and now Knight to d4. Now uh, also you could consider Bishop d7. Let's say Knight goes back to b7 and then pawn to a4. Uh, but uh, you know. It's merely a, a matter of choice. None of these are, are better than the other. It's merely a preference thing. So knight to d4 was played. And now we have knight to b7. Attacks the bishop. Now pawn to e5. And king to g8. You, of course you could capture. But uh, if f captures. You're just going to play f captures. And then maybe king to g6. Again you will get the f7 square. And uh, it will be hard uh, to push. And even if you get the pawn all the way. Uh, th there's still the bishop guarding the light square. So king to g8 was played. Now comes knight captures. Um, uh, uh, sorry, not knight captures on c6. First king to g3, and now bishop to d7. Uh, and now, how do you continue this? It's move 40. Uh, time control has been reached, uh, and um, it was um, basically uh, the the best Nepo could do. This e5 move was played at a crucial moment on move 39, and the thing had some two minutes to solve this uh, position, whether he wants to capture, where to play bishop to d7, to capture, to start the king march, uh, in uh, how to continue. So he thought it would be best to just play king to g8 and not make uh, any sort of a radical decision here. And then uh, what continued was uh, just king to g3. If you guys are wondering about knight, ca instead of this move, if you're wondering about knight captures on d6, it is possible, but it's um, fairly fairly close to winning for white, because now uh, you, you have to stop knight to e6 to c5 and this d7 pawn push uh, so you have to play bishop here to control the knight but now let's say pawn to b4 a captures on b4 a captures on b4 let's say g6 and now pawn to f5 is very very uh, strong for white and uh, you will you will uh, gain very crucial squares here for for your king so it's not something that uh, you want to do especially if something like g captures then these uh, all of these pawns are extremely weak uh, and um, uh, white is just much better once the king touches the, G, the, the f4 square those pawns are uh, very very uh, easy to pick up then the knight picks up the f5 pawn then this pawn will fall then this pawn will fall and so on at some point the black king will have to decide between guarding the pawns on the king side and, and protecting against the pass d pawn and you will uh, easily lose this game so that's the problem uh, so like i said king to g8 by ding uh, now comes king to g3 bringing the king into the game and now bishop to d7 we have reached move 40 and an additional hour is granted to both players to um, be able to continue the game we have bishop to c7 uh, and here, just knight to c5, not uh, worrying about the a5 pawn, knight to c5 is the way to go, because you will, well, uh, you will uh, win at least uh, one of the pawns, knight, to, knight will come to d3, then you will put more pressure on e5, and the b2 pawn is very weak, so bishop captures on a5 was played, king to f7, and now bishop to b4, attacking the knight on c5, uh, knight to d3 and now e6 with check with bishop captures on e6 
knight captures on c6 and now bishop to d7 here. Uh, although uh, a lot of you are wondering that uh, why not knight captures on b2, this actually blunders the game because knight to d8 check wins the bishop as the bishop controls the dark square, so the black king has to move away from the defense of the bishop. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it is possible for such a thing to happen. Uh, but okay, uh, bishop to d7 being, uh, being very, very careful here. Knight to d4 and now knight captures on b2. We have king to f3. Knight to d3 and now pawn to g3. We have knight to c1 and here king to e3 was played and it was in this position on move 49 that Nepo and Ding agreed to a draw as there is nothing more to be done here. The bishops are of opposite colors, the material is equal and there is really no way to, to push for this. Uh, you could, okay, uh, burn uh, more time and exhaust every possible option but then again you don't know if that goes in your favor or your opponent's favor, you don't know. Okay, you could be very confident in your stamina and maybe you want to torture your opponent for like two or three more hours, uh, but okay, maybe that's going to uh, help your opponent more than it will help you. So it's something that uh, we might see from Magnus Carlsen. I mean, he he is famous for, you know, turning every stone and squeezing every stone for, the, for you know, even a glimpse of a drop of water. Uh, but uh, you know it's it's hard to say. We remember the uh, like the, the the first game of the match uh, uh, between Carlson and Caruana, which lasted like almost eight hours. Uh, so that was uh, pretty intense. But it, it, this one lasted like four and a half hours, so not not a bad one. Uh, and Ding will have to do some more work. Uh, uh, on his preparation, especially uh, regarding these lines, as there are some of the lines here that Nepo could have taken that uh, could uh, give him uh, more advantage, and it would be very, very uh, tricky for Ding to continue like that h3 line that we've discussed. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, he did burn a lot more time, and he showed that he didn't really uh, have everything prepared, but yeah, if Nepo found like h3 in, 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 in this position or in some other positions, uh, could be uh, very, very annoying for him. If you remember the, the line that we've discussed, Queen captures and then Knight to d5. A complete madness, I know, but it is. Uh, there is so much for them to cover because this is only game one. Uh, there are 13 more games to be played. And now, uh, if Nepo is to repeat this uh, this line and Ding is to repeat this line, all of them have to have all of these, uh, all of these lines uh, prepared and analyzed. And it's just going to be... Uh, absolutely incredible. So yeah, very nicely done. First game uh, ends in a draw. One of the things that I um, was interested in one, once I saw what variation they were playing. Okay, it's a nice rule Ru Lopez and the bishop d7 with bishop captures on c6. Uh, it's uh, a line that was analyzed many, many times. Like it's been played uh, uh, so many times uh, throughout history. But uh, with every new World Chess Championship cycle, players uh, are preparing with stronger computers. So even if you check a line that uh, was checked before, now with uh, you know different approaches from different players and uh, players having different seconds. Now even, I, I don't know if you know, uh, one of uh, Ding's seconds is Richard Rapport, who is uh, known for his incredible aggressive style and uh, his very creative play. So what lines did he choose um, or maybe uh, got the Ding to, to pick up for the World Chess Championship match would also be a very interesting thing to know. Uh, but also what I wanted to know is that uh, what um, software and hardware were the players using for their preparation for the World Chess Championship match. So just uh, out of fun, uh, I, I went ch to, to check which country uh, has like the strongest super supercomputers. Turns out the strongest supercomputer is located in Japan. And okay, we, you'd probably figure that. And the fourth uh, strongest supercomputer in the world is in China. Uh, Russia is not even in the top 10. Uh, but um, yeah, okay, supercomputers are used to do very important things like, you know, find cure for, for COVID, you know, calculate um, uh, how maybe to predict earthquakes or how to avoid being hit by meteor. But maybe, you know, for the World Chess Championship, Imagine they would, you know, give them access to those supercomputers, maybe to prepare prepare some chess lines. Uh, I don't know. So I, I like, of course, they're not using um, uh, computers of that strength, uh, but I, I would be interested in also what what they are using, uh, as they, you know, they uh, make it public to, of who their seconds are. Uh, I'd also be very interested in what they were using to prepare for the World Chess Championship match. Unlike Magnus, who uh, refused to uh, reveal who his seconds are until the very last day of, or basically until the end of the World Chess Championship match. 
Uh, still, we have no idea why that is so, but, uh, you know, he, he just uh, rolled like that. Uh, but okay, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. First game of the World Chess Championship match between Yanni Pomnishi and Ding Liren. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, if you have any questions that you would like answered, put them in the, in the comment section below. I will answer them uh, in the probably in the, quickly in the beginning or maybe even in the end of the second video. But I will, uh, you know, have a portion for, for that, uh, w whatever you guys are interested in. So yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. A bit of a longer one but it is the world chess championship match so uh really hope you enjoyed it and uh i will see you see you with the the next one uh the game two starts tomorrow uh, i would like to thank uh, uh christian himna uh, uh www.walkthrough.co ravishing reptiles youtuber yaroslav cmbida and james cashman for your contribution to my channel thank you a lot i really appreciate it as usual you can check two of my previous videos here thank you all for watching and i will see you soon continuing with game two of the world chess championship match between yanni pomnishi and ding Liren. Uh, see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.